how was Adam created? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible reads, Let us make the Adam in our image and likeness. He revealed to man how he created him in the Quran in these words. Does man think that he will be left uncontrolled, without purpose? Was he not once a drop of ejected semen? Then he became a clot. So he created and fashioned him and made him into two sexes, male and female. Is he who does this not able to bring the dead to life? Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the, the three great Western traditions, religious traditions, are all founded on the idea there's, that there's something special about human beings. We didn't arrive here accidentally, so we're not just some uh, consequence of billions of years of pointless uh, accidental permutations of life forms. No, we were created in the image of God. The creation really is about the process of our salvation. If you study the Genesis document, uh, you know, the, God uh, made Adam out of clay and then took Eve out of his rib, uh, one of his ribs, etc. Uh, if you study this document, you discover that it, it's really a, a much shorter version of a much more complicated document that comes out of Babylonia and, and then out of Sumer and so on. Now, these ancient texts are give a really complicated story of powerful uh, non-human godlike beings actually engineering us, making us uh, with, for specific purposes. This is the belief of the world-renowned archaeologist, linguist, and expert in the field of cultural anthropology, Zechariah Sitchin. I'm Zechariah Sitchin. I devoted a lifetime to the study of ancient civilizations, ancient languages, their art, their beliefs, and the knowledge that they had. And the question is, when you study, when you look at all that, is it myth, is it mythology, or did it really happen? I believe it all really happened. If we had physical, tangible evidence, we are not only not alone in the universe, but someone has been on the next planet over. That in itself will, will forever change our frame of reference. The idea of sending man back into space, to Mars and beyond, ignited the imagination and brought back the notion that mankind and alien beings had crossed paths before. In 1968, just one year before Neil Armstrong's epic space flight, a book was published that forever changed the way many in the scientific, religious, and creative communities would view their home planet. Written by Swiss author Eric von Daniken, Chariots of the Gods attempted to prove that alien explorers had visited the Earth thousands of years ago. I asked the question, were primitive human influenced by extraterrestrials, not gods? And if it all was like I suggested, where is the proof? So you start trying to find at least indications. That's what I have done now for at least 45 years. You have pictorial evidence, you have artifacts in archaeology, and you have what come out of the old literature. Hundreds of indications which you cannot deny anymore. What it means is that we need new explanations for human origins. That perhaps we're not alone in the universe, and that human-like beings came to this planet from some other planet elsewhere in the cosmos. I think that's a very good idea myself. And it really excited people. It was a new way of looking at the past, looking at ancient civilizations. And it put this very modern space age spin to the whole thing. In May of 2008, a startling proclamation was issued by the Vatican. For the first time in its 2000 year history, the Catholic Church acknowledged the possibility that intelligent life could exist on other planets and that a belief in extraterrestrials did not contradict a belief in God. 
which means of course that we are now entering an age in which uh, the universe is beginning to be conceived in different ways from what it was before and if it is a reality for us why could it not have been a reality for other beings in the universe who could have visited our earth and perhaps guided culture in ancient times We'll meet a new breed of scientific investigators who claim that the history of man on this planet may be radically different than what is accepted today. In 1859, Charles Darwin published his book, The Origin of Species. This book put forth the revolutionary idea that all life on Earth could be explained by the workings of nature. Instead of a supreme being creating the diversity of life, the theory of evolution proposes that accidental changes in nature are the cause. These changes are governed by the process of natural selection, survival of the fittest. Over the past two centuries, archaeologists have collected bones and artifacts that suggest there's a logical sequence of evolutionary steps from ape to man. Man's earliest relatives were ape-like beings who appeared around 25 million years ago. The first of those to walk upright emerged 20 million years later. Over the remaining 5 million years, he continued to evolve, passing through various stages of development until modern man, like ourselves, emerged over 100,000 years ago. Mankind came out of the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages reached the age of enlightenment, experienced the industrial revolution, and entered the era of advanced technology, the era of genetic engineering. genetic engineering, fertilization in vitro, in a glass tube as depicted in this cylinder seal rendering. Adam was the first test tube baby. our closest genetic relative to human beings would be the chimpanzee. We're, we share like 98 plus percent identical DNA. We are smarter than a chimpanzee. So let's invent a measure of intelligence that make humans unique. Let's say intelligence is your ability to like compose poetry, symphonies, do art, math and science, let's say, okay? Let's make that as the arbitrary definition of intelligence for the moment. Chimps can't do any of that. Yet we share 98, 99% identical DNA, okay? The most brilliant chimp there ever was maybe can do a little bit of sign language. Well, our toddlers can do that. Toddlers. So here's what concerns me deeply, deeply. Everything that we are that distinguishes us from chimps 
emerges from that 1% difference in DNA. It has to, because that's the difference. The Hubble telescope, these grand, that's in that 1%. Maybe everything that we are that is not the chimp is not as smart compared to the chimp as we tell ourselves it is. Maybe the difference between constructing and launching a Hubble telescope and a chimp combining two finger motions as sign language, maybe that difference is not all that great. Imagine another life form that's 1% different from us in the direction that we are different from the chimp. Who, what are we to they? We would be drooling, blithering idiots in their presence. That's what we would be. I believe that we came from outer space, that we are the direct descendants of the intelligent people who landed here a long time ago. Gene Phillips is the founder and president of the Ancient Astronaut Society. He claims that museums are hiding thousands of artifacts that do not conform to their narrow view of anthropology. The idea that there was in our solar system a race of intelligent beings far older than us who are now gone would certainly force us to rethink lots of questions. <laughs>